In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we come to this Mass, we first take a moment to call to mind our sins on the solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the heart of your Son, wounded by our sins, bestow on us in mercy the boundless treasures of your love, grant, we pray, that in paying him the homage of our devotion, we may always offer worthy reparation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, You are a people sacred to the Lord your God. He has chosen you from all the nations on the face of the earth to be a people peculiarly his own. It was not because you are the largest of all nations that the Lord set his heart on you and chose you, for you are really the smallest of all nations. It was because the Lord loved you and because of his fidelity to the oath he had sworn to your fathers that he brought you out with his strong hand from the place of slavery and ransomed you from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Understand then that the Lord your God is God indeed, the faithful God who keeps his merciful covenant down to the thousandth generation toward those who love him and keep his commandments, but who repays with destruction a person who hates him. He does not dally with such a one but makes them personally pay for it. You shall therefore carefully observe the commandments, the statutes, and the decrees that I enjoin on you today. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. He pardons all your iniquities, heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. 
Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God has revealed to us. God sent his only Son into the world, so that we might have life through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as expiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we must also love one another. No one has ever seen God, yet if we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is brought to perfection in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us, and that he has given us of his Spirit. Moreover, we have seen and testify that the Father sent his Son as Savior of the world. Whoever acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. We have come to know and to believe in the love God has for us. God is love, and whoever remains in love remains in God, and God in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. For although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you have rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy, and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Lord Jesus Christ. So we celebrate a, a very great feast day, the Sacred Heart of Jesus. This has always been a very special feast day for me personally, as in the seminary I was entrusted with the first Friday Sacred Heart devotion and to lead it in the seminary, and I did that for a number of years. And in fact, my vestment today, which is my first mass vestment, 10 years old now, still holding up, is actually designed with the Sacred Heart devotion in mind. This is a one-off custom-designed um, vestment. And uh, the design is, is the red thread because you have IHS for the name of Jesus. But I had it outlined in red thread to honor Jesus' Sacred Heart because Jesus allowed his heart to ex- be exposed, his blood to be shed and seen which allows us to see how precious faith is and how precious the church is. Now, of course, you have IHS written in glittery gold thread, which is so easy for us to become enthralled by, enthralled by the money and power and prestige of the church. But in reality, you only really see the true beauty of the church when we too are willing to imitate Christ in giving our hearts to one another, allowing our blood to be shed in love for one another. And frankly, this is when you see the church being most precious in the eyes of God when we too are willing to bleed a bit in love for one another, in love for God. Our gospel reading today is quite beautiful, and we hear you know, that these things have been hidden from the wise and the learned, but revealed to little ones. I think what Jesus is saying today and why this gospel reading is picked for this feast day is that little ones know how to love. Little ones know how to trust. 
Little ones know how to reveal their hearts in everything they do, whether it is receiving a hug from their parents or eating ice cream or crying because they're not getting their way. They know how to reveal their hearts and do it freely. But then there's something that happens. Maybe they start becoming wise and learned. They start to realize all the deception in our world. And they stop doing that. They start becoming more distant. They start becoming less revelatory. It becomes harder and harder to see their thoughts and to see their emotions and see what's really going on. Of course, this is not all kids, all young adults that this happens to, but it happens to a great many. You know, there's many people, especially young people in our day today, who think that they need to experiment with love, experiment with their hearts. They need to have certain experiences in order to be adults, in order to know what life is about. But sadly, you can see when that happens because they lose that innocence. They lose that inner goodness that allows them to be childlike. All of a sudden, they become distant and serious and sullen where there was such a freedom and joy and laughter and goodness before. All of a sudden, the church becomes less important. Helping other people, not essential. Thinking of other people, not important. And they start to focus on themselves because they don't quite know who they are anymore. They feel they've lost something. And this is where our Sacred Heart devotion really comes in. Because Jesus' Sacred Heart shows us how God has chosen us, not because of who we are, not because of what we have. In fact, our first reading, Moses tells the Israelites, you're not chosen because you're some great nation. You're chosen because God loves you. And that is the only reason. There is no human metric to make God choose Israel over other nations. It is God's choice. And the same thing with us. God loving us is not dependent on anything It is God's choice. And this choice is manifested most profoundly, frankly, in our baptisms, where God chooses us and prepares that place for us in heaven, is more generous with us than we can possibly imagine. No one these days should ever doubt, as it is alive from the pit of hell, that they are not loved by God. Everyone should know God's love and that they are loved by God and it's God's choice. What is lacking for us is our receiving that love. Us being childlike enough to give our hearts to God the Father, that God the Father may give the heart of His Son that was pierced to us. It is to have that courage and childlike trust to to exchange hearts, if you will, that our hearts may beat with the sacred heart of Jesus and that our hearts may be molded and mended and transformed in the potter's hands, in God the Father's hands, as he not only created our hearts, but he chooses to renew our hearts through the suffering of Christ, through the love of the Holy Spirit. This really is a task for the church these days, to not only proclaim that you are loved by God, but that we can receive that love and we can be transformed by that love. There are many lies and heresies in the church this day, and one of them is that everyone goes to heaven. Everyone's just automatically good and loved. There is no need for transformation and conversion. There is no need for confession. You're just good to go. And that is such a lie. That is such a cop-out and cheapening of the reality of God's love for us and the transformative power of His love. This is why so many people are disillusioned by the church these days because it doesn't seem like it's worth anything. If I'm just loved by God automatically, everyone goes to heaven, why go to Mass? Why pray? There's no reason for it. It doesn't do anything. And so many people believe this lie. But then also you have the opposite extreme, where many of us who go to church on a regular basis are not joyful, are not generous, are not as loving as we should be. How many people say, well, I'm not going to go to Catholic Church because frankly, I don't see the difference it's making in the lives of the people who go. Now granted, this is also a cop-out by many people not wanting to go to church and frankly, it's an unfair assessment. But there is a little truth to it if we're going to be honest. We can all do a little bit better in the way that we love and the way that we 
are generous. It is so tragic to me, including the two families I talked to yesterday, who are surprised that I am willing to help them find rent assistance and food as they're unemployed because they have the virus. They're, they're shocked that Father Tim, according to the rumor mill, actually is willing to help in these things. It's just tragic that people don't think automatically that the church is frankly one of the largest charitable organizations in the world, that Catholic Charities is the largest charitable organization worldwide. This is part and parcel what we do. It saddens me so much when people complain about the diocesan annual appeal because over 25% of that appeal goes right to charitable giving. A lot of it goes to Catholic Charities. It is our largest charitable appeal of the year for the poor and our diocese and the world. I called Catholic Charities on Monday. Roberto, the director, good friend of mine, good, good friend, of course, working in the House of Mercy. I work with him a lot. And uh, it's been a very fruitful, fruitful relationship for me personally. Very inspiring guy. And I just said, Roberto, we're not doing too well in town. I think I'm going to need some emergency assistance here. Find Father Tim. Just let us know what you need. <laughs> Make sure you ask people these questions, and yes, if they, if they fall into these things, yeah, we'd be happy to give gas cards and, and, and county market gift cards. Not a problem. We'll just send you a check, have you buy them. Not a big deal. And it's just so free, so easy. And it's a beautiful thing. And I've just been amazed at how many people in our parish have donated to the Works of Charity account already for families in need, which has enabled me to help a lot of these families who do need a little bit of help as they look for work, as they recover, as they try to keep caring for their kids. It's such a blessing these days that our school systems continue to give hot lunch because for a lot of families in town, I'm talking a lot of families, that is their primary source of food every day. And I think that is such a foreign concept to us that there are families who are actually depending on the hot lunch program, but there are a lot of them. And they're so thankful to the schools, they're so thankful to that assistance that's making it possible for them to have good food each and every day as they try to recover and try to find a way to provide for their families once again. I think the Sacred Heart of Jesus and this devotion calls us to be willing to live in and with the sufferings of Christ and our brothers and sisters, to recognize the true cry of the poor in our midst that I think the media gets wrong so often. I think if we try to look for the cry of the poor on a national level, we're not going to hear it. But if we look to our neighbor, if we look to our community, that's when we truly recognize the true cry of the poor and can truly be effective in satiating Christ's thirst, that all may be one, that all may come to know his great love. There are so many people coming to church today in our parishes because someone in the church reached out and helped them. There are so many people who are evangelized in our parish today, so many families, because the church became relevant in their time of need. And I think for each of us, as we read the words in our gospel, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. Isn't this the spirituality that we are talking about? Isn't this the kind of yoke that Jesus is calling us to? to carry and help carry the crosses of others, that they may truly come to recognize the cross of Christ, to help them see the real burden in their lives and the true support that Christ comes to give them, to help find mercy and a perfect love, a deeper purpose and meaning in their lives, and to recognize that they are not their guilt and shame. They are not the lies they thought they were but they are able to have a new heart, a heart that bleeds for them, a heart that's pierced for them, a heart that is on fire for them, that they too may be inflamed with this great love and truly come to recognize that life truly is worth living when we dare to love with the heart of Christ. So my brothers and sisters, we have so much to pray about in this Mass today, and we have so much to be about, but let us not be overwhelmed let us just simply be childlike and look for the invitations that Jesus gives us this day, this week, to be of love to one another, to respond to Christ's love, whether it be in a simple glance, a simple hello, 
or maybe a true, deeper asking of how someone is doing and being willing to hear the answer and respond to that answer. I think these things happen in simple human and organic ways because, quite frankly, Christ has a human heart. Christ has human blood. And if Christ can love with a perfect love, so can we. Because, quite frankly, we're made out of the same stuff. And since it is a solemnity, the church asks us to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was encountered the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who's crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again, glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life to world to come. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, as we come to this Mass, we offer our prayers and petitions. Pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop William, all priests, deacons, all who serve in the church and our communities. We pray that we may love with the sacred heart more and more as a church, that all may come to know the fire of Christ's love for everyone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for all the sick and suffering, all those without hope, those who do not believe in God and those who care for them. Pray for all those who have been wounded by love, false love. And we pray for all those suffering the effects of this virus, especially the Bonilla family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for our parish communities, our own families. We pray for a greater wisdom, a greater childlike wisdom, that we may love one another with the heart of Christ and truly be a witness to love in our community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died, all those who will die this day, that they will know God's eternal love. We pray to the Lord. We also pray in a special way for all those who have caused harm in the church and for their victims, and we pray in reparation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers. Help us to be ever more eager as we try and strive to love like you. Help us to have the courage to embrace your sacred heart, that our own hearts may be transformed and molded and filled by yours. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all in his holy church. O Lord, look, we pray, on the surpassing charity in which the heart of your beloved Son that we offer may be a gift acceptable to you and an expiation of our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to O Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For raised up high on the cross, he gave himself up for us with a wonderful love and poured out blood and water from his pierced side, the wellspring of the church's sacraments, so that one over to the open heart of the Savior, all might draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end, we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. And gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Amen. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, and with all the saints, and whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen, graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind amends to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace, O Lord, be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, 
I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. and that the graces given to us at Mass may be extended to you as well. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the sacrament of charity, O Lord, make us fervent with the fire of your holy love, so that, drawn always to your Son, we may learn to see him in our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. St. Michael, the Archangel, Defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Have a good one, everybody.